What's up guys, my brothers and sisters? Um, I, um, earlier today, um, I had realized something that I didn't realize before, but before, and, uh, I wanted to share it with you guys. So, okay, no one knows the time, the day, or the hour, but I want to show you something. It says right here, da 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 the fig tree teaches us a lesson. When its branches become green and soft and, and new leaves begin to grow, then you know that summer is near. First of all, I just want to say we're in summer, so I thought that was kind of ironic. Second of all, I thought of something. So what it's saying is that uh, so you know summer is near. So also... When you see these things happening, you know that the time is near, ready to come. I tell you the truth. All these things will happen while people of this time are still living. The whole world, earth, and sky will be destroyed. And you, you basically have read this one quite a few times. But it like hit me earlier when it said... The fig tree teaches us a lesson. It teaches us that when its branches become green and you know, uh, and new leaves begin to grow, you know summer near is near. So, like when it said that, and so when you see all these things happening, you know time is near. So I had the thought. Well, um, so if that's true, then. What it's basically indicating to us is that no one will know the time, the day, nor the hour, but they will get the sense that it's coming near. Kind of like you know it's going to be winter when it starts to get cold and it starts to get dark and more rainy, even if you didn't have a calendar and it started to be nothing but rain and things like that. And Or kind of like right before a rain is about to happen, it, there becomes clouds in the sky and then it you smell it in the air, and you could just feel it in the air that it's going to rain. Um, no one knows the time or hour, but um, I've been listening to a lot of Mark Hardy videos, and he kept talking about how he could see signs, God was giving him a lot of signs in his dreams, um, around him, he could see the demons and people, he could see all sorts of things like that, and he's a very spiritual person. And um, I couldn't help but think to myself, so he, he thinks that the time is near. Now a lot of us are getting that sense that the time is near. But how do we know for sure? And then it confirmed it. God yesterday told me to uh, go to a part in the Bible where it talked about the boy sneezing seven times. Mark Hardy, um, some of you guys, have, I read your comments, you guys talking about how it's been seven years. And this is like the seventh year all connecting guys um having a lot of visions um i'm sure a lot of you have been attacked in your dreams by demons by evil spirits and i'm sure you guys have been having a lot of nightmares or maybe dreams visions of the rapture and other signs that go with it for example mark hardy's dream about his hand being transparent i thought that was awesome and something else about wild vines um, I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, I don't remember much from that video, but it was pretty interesting. And, um, yeah, and uh, I, I really feel like the time is upon us. Now, we should always be ready. But that thought came to me <gasps> earlier. And so, you know, I decided to share that. Um, and, you know, the weird part is that it's so interesting because we're in summer and it's about to, I, I don't remember when I heard this, but I remember hearing something else about, I think fall or something, when, um, oh, let's see, maybe I could read it from in here. Anyway, like it says in the Bible, no one knows when that day nor time will be. The sun and the angels in heaven don't know, only the Father knows. Be careful and always ready. 
But it was saying here that the fig tree it teaches us a lesson that, you know, and I already read that a few times. And you, you get the point. Basically, the time is near. So you guys got to be on guard all the time. Always think positive. Do your best to not get upset. And just take on the day. Hey, it doesn't matter whether yesterday was ready. What matters is, what are you being like today? What are you going to do today? Because see, yesterday was yesterday. Tomorrow, uh, what's that thing from Kung Fu Panda? I love that movie. Uh, yesterday was history. Tomorrow is a mystery. But today is a gift. That is why they call it a present. A present. That is the wise words of a turtle from the movie Kung Fu Panda. You should listen to that turtle. It's green. He's green like this room. I'm just teasing you guys, you know, but hey, it's true. He had a good point there. I mean, geez, such a strong message from such a silly movie. Anyways, you get the point. So don't worry about tomorrow. You can still think about what you want to do tomorrow. You can still think about what you want to do 30 years from now. But remember, rapture is happening soon. So be on guard. We don't actually know when, but we know it's going to happen soon. Hey, maybe soon could be two years from now. Maybe soon could be three years from now. We don't know. Maybe it could be today. It could be right now. It could be this very second. We don't know. It could be a week from now. We just don't know. So the best thing to do is to just stay focused on the Lord. And uh, always be on guard. And whatever you do... Don't give in to Satan. And you tell him. I'm telling you. You should tell him. I did it today too. I said, don't you dare. And you should say so too to Satan. Don't you dare. You tell me who I'm going to worship. Who I'm going to be with. The only, per the only person's words that matter to me is my God, my Heavenly Father's words. Because those are the only words that matter. Doesn't matter what anyone else says to me. If someone called, if someone told me that I that my God is stupid, that that, that worshiping God is stupid, you know what I'd say? Either A, I'd ignore him, or B, I'd say, well, go ahead and think what you think, and I'll uh, believe what I believe. You believe what you believe, I believe what I believe. That's true. You can agree to disagree. It's always the wise thing to do. Hey, it's their problem if they don't want to follow God. It's their problem. And I'm sure God's finding a way to work in their lives, too. Another thing you can do is maybe they don't know who God is. You could spread the word to them. Maybe you could change their ways. Um, but I don't remember who it was. Um, oh, yes. Uh, Brother Mike, I believe, was his name. Uh, he, uh, I think he said it is that um, he let two people into his car, um, I guess. I, he didn't say why, but one believed in, I forget what, and the other believed in Buddhism or something. And then uh, he said that he's, he just straight up told them the word of God, straight up. One, and he said he told them through God spoke to them, through him, and guess what? They, they turn to God. Sometimes people give you a hard time about God because they don't believe it, because they doubt it. But the truth is, what God does, what's written in our Bibles, is not fake. It's real. I have the King James Version, just so you know. And uh, I don't want to switch it for nothing. I mean, there's many other Bibles, but I'm sticking to this one. I have a gut feeling that this is the one that I should stick to. And also, I've had the gut feeling that um, I should always carry it around me. And it makes sense, because the, if the tribulation happened, um, say, say we just got raptured up, now the tribulation. And what's going to happen to all those people who get left behind? You want to save as many people as possible, guys. you got to spread the word like a fire. Not for us, but... Well, not just for us, because we're, we're listening to the Word of God. We're paying attention. No, we need to spread it to those of us who don't know God, who need the Word of God, who haven't heard the Word of God, or maybe they have heard it, 
but they heard it from the wrong people. Maybe they heard it wrong. Maybe someone preached it to them wrong. And now they're doing it wrong. Guys, we need to spread the word truthfully. Not the way the world wants to see it, but the way God sees it. And uh, also, when it comes to the tribulation, we should always care, carry our Bibles around so that way, even if you can't. What Mark Hardy's doing, he, he says um, he's going to, uh, you know, do whatever it takes to help, like, people, like, on, before the tribulation, you know, like, help people when it comes to the tribulation, before he goes. So, um, good props for you, Mark Hardy, good job. And, um, uh, you know, try to help, like, think about it. When, when you leave, you're left behind. All your belongings, all that stuff is staying behind. So maybe you should carry around things that would help someone else because you never know who's going to pick up that Bible. See, maybe you were supposed to bring your Bible from somewhere and you lost it. But then when you lost it, even though it wasn't the tribulation, maybe someone who really needed a Bible got the Bible. Because you already know so much about the Bible. And you can always get a new one, right? My store, Love, Inc., um, Threads of Love, Centillary, uh, and I believe there's one in Hanford. They, uh, they give away free Bibles. Bibles for free. So if you guys want to get a free Bible, that's the place to be. And uh, you know where the old hostess building is so if you live in Tulare? Oh yeah, I don't, but apparently a lot of people keep bringing that up. So when you're looking for Threads of Love, just think of the old hostess building. Be right next to where it is. And, uh, what else? When it comes to the tribulation, um, I've been hearing God say to me that I should bring my Bible around so that way, um, on the tribulation, someone who really needs it can pick it up. So that way they can learn the word of God. Because, guys, for all those people who are being left behind, um, they need all the help they can get. And either A, they're going to pick the mark of the beast, or B, they're going to pick death. Because, or they're going to pick starvation, suffering. That is what the tribulation is going to be. It's going to be terrible. It's not going to be good. But that is why we must spread the word of God around people. So that way, when it comes to the rapture, people will be saved. Think about it. It's like a lot of people have been saying. It's like the Bible says. A lot of Christians are going to be left behind. A lot. Christians. Think about that. Catholics. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter your religion. It doesn't matter who you are. As long as you have faith in God... As long as you have a relationship with God, that's all that matters. Who cares about our religion? The only thing that matters is that we have a relationship with God. The only thing that matters is us helping each other, helping us stand up for what's right, helping us do what we're supposed to do in God's name. Because this world is almost up. Our time here is almost up. And if, if we're not ready, then we'll be left behind. For all those people, if we don't spread the word, then maybe someone who could have been saved got left behind. We don't want anyone, not anyone, to be left behind, guys. So please, I urge you, God urges you, forget me urging you, God's urging you to talk to other people. Help him spread the word of God. Help Jesus. Spread his word. Help him spread his word like a fire. You know how fast fire spreads. But this is the good fire. This is the holy fire. This is what drives us. Jesus, Holy Spirit. Jesus' word. Everything that Jesus is, is that holy fire. We gotta spread it around the world. Everywhere. From this end of the world to that end of the world that end to that end and all around the world and we mustn't give up 
we got to keep fighting. We got to keep pushing ourselves to our limits and beyond because trying is one thing, but doing it is a whole other story. You can say, I will try to pass that test. Or you can say, I will pass that test. I will do whatever it takes to pass that test. Now, I will. I will do it. Why? Because as long as we have the strength of Jesus Christ, as long as we can do all things through Christ, we will, without a doubt, help each other be saved. We will spread the word of God. On the day of the rapture, we'll be saved. Now, guys, like I said, God urges you to spread the word of God. God urges you to do whatever it takes to help each other. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ. So please, do what's right. Help someone else. Don't let them be left behind. Remember, Jesus Christ is coming soon. God bless you guys. I hope you have a great day. And uh, you all mean very much to me. And, uh, you mean very much to God. God is all you need to focus on. Still focus on, like, getting your chores done and things like that. But remember, God's your number one priority out of everything. When when you go to work, when you, like, on your break and on your lunch, pray. You don't have to talk about God out loud if you're not allowed to. But if you can, if you get that moment, that chance, do it. Don't leave God hanging. And if God asks you to do something, just do it. Don't question it. Because even if it makes you look crazy, even if it makes you look weird, God's word is God's word. Um, take a look at Moses. Um, he was just a kid, and uh, God said, do this. And he thought, oh, I can't, I can't do this. I can't say this. Why not? Because I'm just a kid, and who, who made the mouth of, hold on, maybe I can even find it. I'm going to find it. Well, God's going to help me find it. Still looking for it. I don't know why, but I got the gut feeling to stop back at this page again. Um, she has no son, and her husband is old. Oh, da, 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 da. Not what it wants me to read. How can I feed a hundred men with so little? But Elijah said, Give the bread to the people to eat. This is what the Lord said. They will eat and will have food left over. Then he gave it to them. The people ate and had food left over as the Lord said. I think, I think what he's trying to say is, don't question. Don't question what the Lord gives you. The Lord says, um, the Lord says, like this says, that the Lord says, give 20 men 10 loaves of bread, and they'll have enough left over. Don't doubt it. Hand them the bread, and if you'll notice, it will be like maybe 10 more loaves there plus 20 more. I mean, don't doubt the Lord. And don't question yourself. When, when the Lord tells you something, 
when the Lord tells you that um, you're supposed to do something, don't question it. Don't question it. Why? Why did he pick me? Why did he pick me? It's like, why? Why did he pick you? Why did he pick you? Why? Because he needs you to do this. He chose you because you're the only one that can do it. Don't question what the Lord says. I know that sometimes the Lord may not make sense, but we're not meant to know. Sometimes it's good not to ask questions. Sometimes it's just better to be unanswered. Just do what the Lord tells you. And in the end, you know, we're all going, for all of us who have faith, for all of us who spread the word of God, for all of us, who are doing what's right by the Lord, we're going to be saved. You're going to be saved as long as you stay focused, as long as you don't doubt the Lord. Don't deny Jesus' name. Don't deny Jesus' name. Don't deny Jesus' name. Stay focused. You can think about other things, but remember to think of God. Number one, over everything. When you get up in the morning, you at least have a minute to say good morning to Jesus, right? As you're getting up even, maybe right as you open your eyes, say good morning, Jesus. Today is going to be a great day. A great day. Um, maybe uh, as you're washing your hands, uh, today is going to be a great day, Jesus. I can't wait for this day to start. You know, just talk to God. Talk to Him. As I'm telling you right now, that's what the Lord wants you to do. He wants you to talk to Him. He wants you to do what's right by Him. Don't focus on the world. I know the world sucks. We all know the world sucks. The world is like, I like to call it hell. It is. Because we all end up doing the same thing. We have to get a job. We have to and, we're, and we're, we're stuck with that, and there's not enough, like, money to survive off of, and it's just, it's a lot. And then for all of those who go to school, like, we're, we're like, we're being attacked by evil spirits if we have faith, and then at the same time, we're trying to stay focused in school. So you kind of have to balance it all out. But in the end, you can do it. Why? Because as long as you have faith, as long as you have God in your life, you can accomplish anything. Remember, when you're at lunch at school or at work, pray. If you're at college, um, high school, middle school, kindergarten, it doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter who you are, what you look like. The only thing that matters is who you are on the inside. Um, what you do in life, like when it comes to praying to God, and uh, I kind of lost my words there. <laughs> um, praising the Lord, thanking the Lord, and remember to, you know, talk to the Lord. The Lord does care about you. Don't give in to the world. Don't be focused on the world. Money, power, Donald Trump and Hillary, that does it. Did Donald Trump or Hillary die on the cross? No. Hey, you you can vote, but they didn't die on the cross. Honestly, if I were to vote for someone, it'd be Jesus. <laughs> but but he's God. You don't need to vote for him. He's already our God. <laughs> but personally, if I could vote for him, I totally would. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, Donald Trump and Hillary. A lot of people have been looking at them like, I don't trust them. Or other people be like, oh, they're great. It's like, who cares? Who cares? Honestly, I don't even think I'm going to vote. I may, but I don't know them. It's like this. How can I vote for someone I don't know? And they didn't die on the cross. They didn't. Yeah, and when they say God or when they talk about God, I say, God bless you guys. Um, I've heard Hillary say it a few times, but I just wonder if it's all just an act, you know? Do they really sound real to you? 
I don't know. I guess I kind of have had trust issues with presidents and things like that. Um, growing up, I've always just thought, you know, I, I guess I've kind of had a bit of a trust issue with people. I love everyone. I care about everyone, even Trump and Hillary. For someone who is... Ugh. But you know what I mean. It, it's just, don't be too into the, the whole world thing. If you're talking about Trump and Hillary, what did, what did they have? Like, like that's so amazing. I don't see them pulling up any magic wands and doing cool stuff. I just see them talking about promises that they're going to make America great again. Or, oh, America doesn't need to be great. It's already great. Well, even if that is the truth on that point, she sounds like she's trying to make us her best friend. Trump, okay, ever since my sister called Trump an Oompa Loompa, I'm sorry, I think, I think of him as an Oompa Loompa now, that's the only way I see him, and she calls him orange, I'm like, I want it. I guess Trump is the kind of, even if he's a, a tall guy, he could make a great Oompa Loompa. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, that made your date, by the way. I hear a lot of people dislike Trump. None of people like Trump. Um, anyways, totally went off topic there. See, there I go talking about Trump and Hillary. No one cares. Anyways, um, stay focused on God. Don't be of the world and try not to focus on the world. Trump and Hillary isn't everything. How do we know that they're going to keep their promises? We don't even know them. Uh, unless if we went to school with them, hanged out with them, really got to know them, we don't know them. So we have no right to judge, but we also have no right to trust them. Well, wait, I phrase that. We do have right to trust them, but you know what I mean. We probably shouldn't until we get to know them. Who knows, maybe they're really good people, but how do we know? We don't. And I never really hear them speak much on God or Jesus. They don't talk about the scriptures or about how Jesus died on the cross. And if they did, I haven't been hearing much of it. I'm hearing, me, 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 I, 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 great president, what about Jesus? How about... How about this? Here's a great idea. I got one for you. If I were president. I'm just gonna, for the few seconds to pretend to be president. I will help the world, uh, I will help all of you guys uh, um, work as a team. I will help lead this team through uh, faith. Through faith. And Jesus Christ um, will be the one who helps us all come together as, as brothers and sisters, as family, as friends, as a community, as the people of America, and help us all build this nation under God with liberty and justice for all. There you go. That's how you do presidential stuff. Forget what they've been saying. They're just bashing each other. What about God? If, if, okay, let me ask you something. This is straight up. I know you guys are going to probably put this in the comment section. I, I, I don't know, but let me ask you something. Would you prefer someone who says, I'm going to make America great again? Or someone who says, Oh, don't listen to him. I'll make America great again with us working as a team. Or would you rather the um, I'm going down trying to get some Uh-huh. Would you rather someone who says, um, together with Christ leading the way, with all with all of his beauty and strength, he died on the cross for us. He showed, he showed us that even though we are sinners, even though we are not the best at being perfect, because we're not perfect, 
with God, we can make this nation great again. We can do whatever it takes to show the world that America is not evil, that America is good in Christ's name. Who needs, who needs, um, who needs me leading us when we could have God leading us? That is what the president should be saying. I'm not leading you. God is. Now that's having true faith. Now that's being a president. Saying, hey, I'm not going to be doing things my way. I'm going to be doing things God's way. Forget Trump. Forget Hillary. I'm just saying, I'll do things God's way. Because that is the right way. That is the just way. Whatever happened to the flag salute, guys? Seriously. I have, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Um, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you ask me, America has been going bad. And with Trump and Hillary, who knows? There is no way. One nation under God, indeed. There is no way that this country is going to survive. Seriously. As much as I would like to say they'd be great president, none of them said that they're going to do things uh, with, with, uh, through Christ's way. That they're not going to live through Christ. They did. I've never heard either of them say, I'm going to do this Christ's way. No, they're gonna. What they've been saying is, I'm gonna do it my way. I'm gonna do it our way, but not Christ's way. You see where there's a dilemma there. A good president would be a leader, someone who would fix the pains and problems of people, someone who would ask God to help him with that. A, a person who would let God lead the way rather than himself. Instead of being like, oh, I'm all high and mighty because I'm president. Instead, let God lead the way. Let God be the person who helps you be a good president for other people. Not to help yourself, but to help others. Just saying. Seriously. They didn't die on the cross. Jesus did. Please, God. Please stay focused on the Lord and forget Trump and Hillary. Because you can still vote, but they didn't die on the cross. Jesus did. And the rapture is going to happen very soon. So the best thing to do is to just stay focused on the Lord and talk to him. I hope you guys have a great day. God bless you. And sorry for talking extra long. And hope you all have a great day. Amen. And remember, Big tree teaches us the lesson. It teaches us. It teaches us that when its branches become green and soft and new leaves begin to grow, then you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all these things happening, then you know that the time is near. Ready to come and tell you the truth. All these things will happen while people of this time are still living. Well, I hope you guys have a great day and God bless you. And remember, Jesus Christ loves you. And Jesus Christ is the only way, the only option. Amen. Goodbye. My brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen.